Data clustering is one of the basic data analysis tools where a computer algorithm divides a data set into meaningful chunks. Such algorithm can, for instance, separate natural clouds of points or natural hyperplanes that make up a data set. But it could also separate certain physical information, for instance, certain flow features in a fluid dynamics data set. In this video, I will briefly show you a few most important functionalities to cluster high dimensional data sets with PCA Fold. I will start by telling you about a powerful data clustering algorithm implemented in the reduction module called Vector Quantization PCA, or VQPCA in short. The algorithm was first proposed in this paper from 1997. But first, what do people mean by vector quantization? So imagine that you have a set of vectors, say three of them, and you have your data points. We can now establish certain criterion by which we map each data point to one of the vectors. Say this group of points will be attached to the first vector, this group to the second, and this group to the third. We can also do an analogous operation, but for a set of vectors, let's say two sets, each containing two orthogonal vectors, and one part of data points will be attached to the first set and this part of data points to the second set. This is what vector quantization is. It's a mapping between values and vectors or sets of vectors based on some criteria. And in the clustering technique VQPCA, those vectors from, come from doing PCA on the local portions of the data. Let me show you how you can run the VQPC algorithm on your data set. We import the VQPC class from PC Fold and we import NumPy. We load a data set which we'd like to cluster. Here I will use the following two-dimensional data set that is composed of three line segments. We now run VQPCA by instantiating an object of the VQPC class. The algorithm will run with the specified parameters. For example, we will generate three clusters and perform local PCA with just one eigenvector in each cluster. We also specify how each local portion of the data is scaled, for example, to the zero to one range. What is the initialization for the clusters? In this case, a random initialization and some other parameters like the maximum number of iteration that the algorithm should take. As the VQPCA algorithm is running, you will see some information printed in the real time with the verbose flag set to true. For instance, uh, these columns tell you how many data points currently reside in each of the three clusters. These two columns tell you the status of the two convergence criteria. The first one is convergence of the data reconstruction error with local PCA. And the second one is the convergence of cluster centroids. That is, the algorithm checks whether from iteration to iteration the centroids have moved much or maybe not at all. And finally, this number from the last iteration shows you the final reconstruction error with local PCA, uh, with which local PCA approximated the whole data set. And note that after the VQPCA algorithm has converged, uh, this error will rarely be zero for real life data sets. The reason why in this example it is zero is that our starting data set is composed of exactly three exactly one-dimensional structures. Hence, it can be entirely represented by a set of three one-dimensional vectors. However, real-life datasets are rarely that perfect in the sense that even though they might have an inherent low-dimensional structure and data points might be clustered, clustered close to that lower-dimensional structure, there will usually be some scatter around those structures with some data points lying a little off from the hyperplanes. And as a result, the lower dimensional representation becomes lossy. That is, it usually leads to some loss of information and the reconstruction error isn't zero even at the converged iteration. All that to say uh, that the reconstruction error not being zero at the end 
isn't necessarily troubling, it's just a reflection of the data set that you are dealing with. And now that the VKPCA algorithm has finished, we can access the clustering solution, which is an array of class labels for each data point. And sure enough, for this uh, data set, this is the VKPCA clustering result. So the algorithm managed to separate each line segment into a cluster, and this required local PCA to establish the right rotation of the eigenvectors so that each segment belongs exactly to the spun of each eigenvector. And by the way, PCA fold contains ready plotting functions with which you can quickly visualize data sets and clustering results such as these ones. An interesting attribute of the VQPC class is called collected IDX. It's an array of all class labels that were established while VQPC was running towards convergence. And this can help you better visualize exactly how VQPCA made a pass through your dataset. You can then create an animation that shows you how the final class labels were established in the iterative process. And by the way, the story with finding lower dimensional structures in a data set extends to dimensions higher than two. For instance, we can cluster the following data set that is composed of three planar structures. And we again instantiate an object of the VQPC class, but this time we specify three clusters, each approximated with a set of two orthogonal vectors by setting n clusters to three and n components to two. And VQPC will now try to find clusters that are planar structures, since a plane lies in the span of two orthogonal vectors. So we expect that as VQPC is iterating, it will attach each uh, set of orthogonal eigenvectors to each plane. And sure enough, here's the result of running VQPC on this data set. So the algorithm separates each plane. And PCA fold contains plotting functions also for three dimensional data sets where you can steer the elevation angle and the azimuth angle to view the data set from the most convenient perspective. So VQPCA is a good choice if you have a prior belief that your data set is composed of low dimensional linear structures. And for a data set such as this one, it's a great choice to create natural separations in a data set. But for a cloud data set such as this one, VQPC will likely not be a useful chance. It is oblivious to those natural clouds of points. And instead, it will continue to fit low dimensional structures into the data set. So here, a technique such as k means clustering might be more appropriate. You can also check out our book chapter in this great book called Data Driven Fluid Mechanics. You will find a link in the video description. And there we present a couple of interesting applications of VQPC to cluster combustion data sets. PCA Fold also has a bunch of smaller helpful functionalities to manage existing data clustering or to split data sets in a few simple ways. For example, sometimes the class labels come out of a clustering algorithm in no particular order. So here from left to right, VQPCA created cluster label two, then zero, then one. But if, we, if you want to rearrange cluster labels that reads more naturally, for example, for a publication, you can use the function called flip clusters from the preprocess module. And you simply pass the current array that stores class labels, and you pass a dictionary that tells what a current label should become. So in this example, I want cluster two to become cluster zero, cluster zero to become cluster one, and cluster one to become cluster two. And sometimes you might only need to swap two labels out of many classes, and then your dictionary can only contain that one swap and other classes, other class labels will remain intact. We've also implemented a few useful data clustering strategies that are based on binning a single variable uh, out of an otherwise 
multivariate data set. You'll find them in the preprocess module. And for example, given a variable x1, we might want to create classes that are located at equal length intervals in that variable's range. And for this, you can use the function variable bins. We only specify how many classes we want to create, let's say five, and the variable gets divided into five segments. You can then use the same class labels to partition the entire multivariate data set. We also allow the user to have more flexibility in where are the splits in a variable's range. Uh, say we'd like to create clusters such that cluster boundaries happen at minus 0 0.8, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. And for this, you can use the function predefined variable bins and pass a list of those split values. And in this example, the result will be four clusters along the range of variable x1. Finally, there's a functionality that allows to isolate into one cluster all near zero states in a variable. This can be very useful when clustering physical variables, say a combustion data set, where we want to separate all states that correspond to near zero reaction rate, for example. And you can use the function uh, zero neighborhood bins and specify the total number of clusters to create and at what offset from zero should the near zero cluster uh, be created. In this case, I choose 2% offset. And you can also separate near zero positive and near zero negative values into two clusters by setting the split at zero flag to true. So that's all for today. As always, you can check the documentation of PC Default where you can find more detailed tutorials. In the next video, I will show you another interesting functionality of PC Default. See you then.